mystic poem of Kabir. The three worlds are a cage, virtue and vice a net. Every creature is the prey, and one hunter, death. They don't listen to wise words and won't think for themselves, Kabir continues to scream. The world goes by like a dream. Within the five elements, a secret thing. A rare one finds the mystery, the proof, the master's word. If you know you're alive, find the essence of life. Life is the sort of guest you don't meet twice says Kabir. Welcome to the Sant Mat Satsang podcast, a production of Spiritual Awakening Radio. Today, a program titled Rising Above the Darkness into the Light. Maharishi Mehi Parmahans, in his spiritual classic Philosophy of Liberation, says, The desire of an individual to be free from sufferings and to attain the happiness of absolute peace is naturally present in the hearts of all. The purpose of Santmat, the teachings of the Masters, is to provide a system which fulfills the desires of attaining absolute peace. And this is from Baba Devi Sahib of Maradabad. Unlike other worship methods popular in religions and sects with different names, these two methods, seeing the inner light and hearing the inner transcendental sound, are not man-made. God himself is the founder and operator of these methods. Since the beginning, God has kept these two methods inside human beings. The way of the redemption of jivas, or bounded souls, is available within all human beings, says Baba Devi Sahib. And that passage from Baba Devi Sahib reminds me of this from Baba Ram Singh. Satmat is a path of love and a path of of affection. This is the path created by God Almighty Himself. It is not a path created by any Mahatma. It has always been the path and it has existed from the time that the human form first took shape. It is the path through which plane by plane the soul has descended from God Almighty by way of the sound current and has now come into this current human form. And when it goes back, also it will go plane by plane through the sound current. The path has been there, latent, uniquely within the human form at all times. It is on this path that the saints have gone back to God Almighty with the grace of their masters. It is the same path that we will go with the grace of our masters. He also says the living master is one who has manifested this Shabbat or this positive power of light and sound within his being to the extent that he can at will consciously travel the entire path from the physical plane to the true abode of God Almighty, Sach Khan, the true eternal realm. A place of indescribable love, light, and blissful intoxication in God's presence. Reconnecting souls with the full awareness of God Almighty is a living master's sole purpose and destiny. (music) 
It is intended for us as human beings to shift from one state of consciousness to another, to another, to another, to another, and back again. We have the waking state of consciousness, and that can be subdivided into different categories of uh, different kinds of brain waves. Sometimes we're very relaxed, sometimes we're daydreaming. Other times we are very focused on a task. And there is the dream state, and this can be subdivided as well. There are different kinds of dreams. People can have spiritual dreams, satsang in the dream state, and wake up feeling very profound, a sense of awe, like they've been someplace very special and have learned some things, have encountered the saints or masters within. There are different kinds of dreams. And there is also the state of unconsciousness, total deep sleep. And there are different spiritual states. The meditative or mystic state can be subdivided into different planes, levels, categories as well. We are children of both worlds. We human beings are a kind of tree of life embodied with roots in the earth and branches rising into a mystic sky. Rising above the darkness into the light. This is from the Anurag Sagar, the ocean of love. Just as the lotus blooms after getting the light of the sun, in the same way the sufferings of the souls from ages and ages are finished after having darshan or vision of Sat Purush, the true eternal being. And this is a hymn from Guru Nanak from the Gurbani, the Sikh scriptures, or Adi Granth. The love of maya, or illusion, is sweet to the world, but in the end, this delusion is dispelled. So perform devotional worship, link your consciousness to the Supreme Being, and dispel anxiety from your mind. Nanak speaks the truth. Focus your consciousness on the Supreme Being. O oh, my stranger soul, Rivers and streams which separate may be reunited sometime. That rare person who centers his consciousness on the Satguru, the true master, knows intuitively and realizes the Supreme Being. Nanak speaks truth through the true word of the Shabad. Those long separated from the Lord are united once again. Rescued by the light. A couple of verses from the Gnostic Gospel of Pista Sophia, known as Faith Wisdom, the Gospel of Faith Wisdom or Pista Sophia. All the rulers or archons of the height have tried to deceive me into believing that I am a body of matter without light in it. And after this, the merciless powers surrounded me and tried to take away all the light that was within me. But thou appearest to me out of the darkness, and I trusted thee, O light, and said, Thou art my Savior. I thank thee, O light, for having compassion on me, and thou hast saved me, O light, with thy gnosis. The Book of Faith Wisdom, Peace to Sophia.
The following is from a satsang discourse by Swami Vyasanand. We are in the grip of sensory desires because of our earlier karmas. Our past impure actions have taken the form of the sheath of darkness that is seen when we close our eyes in meditation and ignorance and have obstructed the divine light and knowledge of the truth. Veiled by realms of darkness, forms, light, and sound, God is at the center of being, the divine ground of being. Through diligent meditation, my world will merge in the mind, and the mind will merge in me, and then I will merge in the divine. By Swami Vyasanand. When we close our eyes and do not see any objects, this does not mean that there is nothing that can be seen. In other words, the shapeless darkness is also an object. Unfortunately, we cannot even see pure darkness because we are constantly thinking about the images of the world. And instead of seeing darkness, we see imaginary sights projected on the screen of the inner mind. Without practicing the meditation of focusing in the darkness, it is not possible to see the subtle light that lies deep within. The experience of divine light in meditation brings joy, and the progress then becomes rapid. Consequently, one's faith and conviction become stronger. However, until the sheath of darkness is in front of us, it seems that it is very difficult to realize the divine. The fountain of joy has not yet opened, and progress in meditation is slow. Furthermore, if the conviction of practitioners is weak, their faith is also not mature. Gradually, the practitioner may become doubtful of the meditation techniques, because progress is not in sight. Keep in mind that the coward leaves the battlefield, but a fighter continues to struggle to the end. The courageous practitioner battles the realm of darkness and diligently engages in the yoga of dristi, sadhana, or focused gaze, gazing into the darkness. This is the juncture. It is essential to be firm in moral rectitude. At this time, it is important to dedicate day and night to the practice. It is necessary to discipline your daily lifestyle and study the scriptures. It is essential to focus the mind and gaze, follow the practice according to the instruction of the Master. Therefore, it is necessary to surrender oneself to the Master and serve the Guru with mind, body, and life breath. In other words, diligently following the teachings of the Master. When we gaze at a scene in the middle, our mind becomes focused, and we only see the center of the scene, which is the source of the scene. This focal point can be likened to a seed. At the very center of the seed lies the invisible energy, which is the source of what becomes the visible tree. Even though the source of the tree lies in the seed, many are not able to understand the mystery. The implication of this analogy is that the cause of darkness lies in the light. The cause of the light lies in the sound. The cause of the sound lies in the material subtle sounds. The cause of the subtle sounds lies in the infinite divine reality. In other words, the primal seed, the cause of the whole world, both seen and unseen, is the divine being. Until we realize the direct experience of the divine, we are engrossed in the delusion of the material world. As soon as we have complete knowledge of the divine, the other forms of material and subtle reality dissolve. 
As discussed earlier, the center of our energy is the divine being. However, as our consciousness is bound in the physical body, its visionary center is considered to be the Ajna Chakra, the third eye. As soon as the consciousness becomes focused on the Bindu point in the center of the realm of darkness, it realizes that its source is beyond this center, thus consecutively transcending the centers of lower realms and ascending upward within, the consciousness goes beyond the world of material name and form and merges into the root center of the Supreme Being, the original source of all creation. the inner journey of the soul back to its origin. This is a discourse by George Arnsby Jones. The commencement of the mystical path of love, the way of return to our true home, takes place in the fourth and lowest division of creation, which comprises the entirety of our physical universe, all the planets, suns, stars, solar systems, galaxies, and cosmic schemes known and unknown to modern astronomy. Matter in our physical universe is in its most coarse, most dense form with a very limited a mixture of spirit, substance, just enough to vivify matter and maintain life. The physical structure of our universe is the lowest projection of a cosmic idea channeled through the medium of universal mind. The entire physical universe, with its millions of galaxies separated by immeasurable numbers of light years, is as a speck of dust in comparison with the inner realms beyond it. The beginning of the mystical path of love takes place within the human consciousness when the seeker has focused his attention at the third eye center, the Ajna Chakra, between and behind the two eyebrows. The third eye possesses its own illumination, being vivified by the light of the soul, and thus is not dependent upon external forms of light as our physical eyes are. Through the grace of a mystic adept, the seeker has been given a simple technique to transcend body consciousness and to rise into the inner realms. First, he closes his outer eyes and sees with the inner third eye. He also closes his outer ears and hears with the inner spiritual ear. When these things are achieved, the current of consciousness throughout the body will withdraw and become concentrated at the third eye center. The body itself will become senseless, but the seeker's awareness of his soul, his true self, will thereby be heightened. This is the initial stage of what the mystic adepts call Turyapad, the fourth state of existence, or consciousness which is the state of transcendental or superconsciousness. The disciple of the mystic adept has previously been given Simran, the repetition practice of five charged words, as the first step for rising into the spiritual realms. He collects the entire current of consciousness, mind and soul at the third eye center, and the repetition of the five holy words mentally helps him to achieve the required result and he finds his consciousness withdrawing from the physical world. He first encounters the astral region. His first view of the astral region may differ on occasions. He may behold a magnificent blue light, a brilliantly lighted window, or a blaze of radiance before him. He passes through this way of light and sees a colored symmetry with a bright astral point of light within its center. 
The initiate then meditates upon this glorious light and soon finds himself impelled into an azure blue sky that appears to his inner vision as a circular disk or chakra. That is from The Inner Journey of the Soul Back to Its Origin by George Arnsby Jones, a very fascinating booklet that starts at the physical level, goes into the astral, and describes all the various planes of consciousness. And if you'd like to receive a copy, a link to The Inner Journey of the Soul Back to Its Origin by George Arnsby Jones, I would be happy to send you a link to this online free PDF file, ebook. Just send me an email at this address, james at spiritualawakeningradio.com. Ask for the link to the Inner Journey of the Soul booklet by George Arnsby Jones. I'll be happy to share that with you, as it is a very fine summary of the path of the Masters, the Ascension of the Soul. From the darkness to the light, and from the light to the sound, and to the supreme being beyond the light and the sound. The following set of readings is from the book Philosophy of the Masters. In order to learn how to cook well, one has to work under an expert cook. When studying medicine or engineering, one has to do practical work. One cannot become a doctor or an engineer by mere reading. One needs the help of a teacher in all the external sciences. How much more is a teacher needed in the case of the obtruse and difficult spiritual science? For without a teacher, when we shut the eyes, we see only darkness within us. A teacher is needed to show us how to see the inner light. One needs a teacher in every line. Some say that no spiritual teacher is necessary and that they can acquire spiritual knowledge by themselves. They are like a person who refuses to drink water out of a well of someone who is willing to share it with him, but insists upon digging a well of his own. This shows that he is not thirsty yet. Inner light, tranquility, and the blossoming of the lotus of the heart are experienced. Merging the spark in the flame, man transcends the cycle of birth and death and no longer returns to the world of phenomena. practice of Surat Shabad Yoga, inner light and sound meditation. There are three phases of Surat Shabad Yoga, namely Simran, the repetition or remembrance, Dhyan or contemplation, and Dun or melody. Simran consists in repeatedly remembering a certain specific thing. The full details of this practice are obtained from a perfect master. In the beginning, Simran is varan atmak, i.e. practiced by means of spoken words. Later on, however, it is performed by means of the tongue of thought, a mental chant. When it becomes firmly established and the power of remaining in concentration is developed, inner light appears, and also the beautiful astral form of the Master. This form pulls the soul towards it, and in this way, contemplation is completed. The object of the object contemplated upon, the contemplation, and the contemplator become one. The ideal, the contemplation, and the doer become one. When a disciple remembers an ideal again and again and fixes the eyes of contemplation on it again and again, the nairat, or the soul's power of sight, will visualize its shape and absorb its effect. In this way, the soul and the soul's power of seeing rest in calm fixity and the divine melody is heard during contemplation. 
The seeker should fix the attention of the soul on the melody described by the master. Close the three apertures, ears, eyes, and mouth. Make no loud recitations. Close the outer apertures and open the inner ones. Close the inner apertures. Or rather, it says, the inner apertures will open only when the outer ones are closed. That's from a poem of Kabir. Let me read that again. Close the three apertures, ears, eyes, and mouth. Make no loud recitations. Close the outer apertures and open the inner ones. Repeat the name of the Immaculate One. The inner apertures will open only when the outer ones are closed, says Guru Kabir. These three practices, referring to Simran, Dhyan, and Bhajan, or hearing the sound, the repetition of names, Simran, Dhyan, the contemplation of inner light, inner seeing, inner vision, and hearing the divine melody or sound current. These practices are done at the third eye center, also called the third eye and the eight-petaled lotus center. The eye center is between the two eyebrows. For the practice of Surat Shabad Yoga, it is necessary to obtain initiation from a perfect master or saint. Progress in this yoga is made in the company of saints. When the Lord sends his grace from his original home, then only one gets the blessing of meeting a true master and of being in his company. After meeting a master, the disciple need not observe any formal religious rites or ceremonies. The master, by his grace, makes the disciple practice Surat Shabad Yoga. As it says in the Sikh scriptures, by his grace one meets a master, and the master initiates one into the practice of Surat Shabad Yoga. What is the sign of success in the practice of this meditation? It is that one loses all consciousness of the body. In the beginning the hands and feet become numb and other par parts gradually become numb. The currents of consciousness which flow downwards and give life to the body gather together at the center of the soul, the eye center, and the rest of the entire body loses consciousness. Unless one rises completely above the nine doors, the eyes, ears, nostrils, mouth, and two lower apertures, one remains ignorant of the divine vision. As Kabir says, unless one rises above consciousness, he remains without the divine vision. Kabir Sahib also says that the soul, which is wandering around in the nine doors, Cannot find, cannot find the invaluable treasure. Kabir says, O fair damsel, you have searched in all the nine doors, but have not found the precious treasure. O Kabir, the nine doors, hold it not. It is inside the tenth door, says Guru Kabir. In other words, it's not to be found in the apertures that go out into the material plane of creation, not in the outer world, but only by reversing that focus and going within through the third eye center. That is the lens one has to look through in order to see the inner sky. More from Philosophy of the Masters. Love is inherent in every person and may be kindled in two ways. One is by the grace of the Lord or that of his manifestation in the world, namely a master. The other method is by means of spiritual practice. In actual practice, the first essential is to awaken love for God by means of repetition and then by contemplation. 
as we repeat the five holy names with the tongue of thought, our attraction and love for him increase within ourselves. When a lover remembers him and becomes fully absorbed in his remembrance, then God turns the lover's attention towards devotion by his divine grace. Simran, or repetition, done with faith, produces a unique feeling in the heart. By doing Simran, a feeling of bliss and divine influence fills the heart. This state is produced sooner or later according to the individual devotee's samskaras, predominating nature, the results of past karmic impressions. So here this is referring to repeating the sacred names of God, the practice of Simran, for the most part done mentally, you know, within yourself, in a spirit of bhakti, repeating these names, not in a dry, mechanical sort of way, but more like calling out to your beloved. A spirit of love and devotion makes the repetition of these sacred names of God done in meditation come to life. It's as if if you are repeating sacred names in a dry, mechanical sort of way, you, you transports your soul or your awareness to a dry, mechanical place that you're not so enthusiastic about. But if you follow the teachings of the Masters and properly do Simran repetition of the sacred names, uh, they are done in a spirit of love and devotion, of bhakti and prem, and they take you to that realm of love. They take you to the state of love. It's interesting what you conceive of as you're repeating the names. Uh, that is where it takes you. So it is best to do the Simran practice in a spirit of love and devotion, prem and bhakti, in order to have the most effective Simran practice. Philosophy of the Masters. Dion is the second spiritual practice at its beginning with the help of the repetition of charged names. The sensory currents withdraw from the body below to the eye focus that leads to the perception of the inner light. Then starts the second phase of Dion, contemplation. It can be attained by absorbing one's attention into the inner divine light so much that one forgets oneself completely. Dion leads to bhajan. The third part of the spiritual practice is bhajan, listening to the Shabad, nam, or sound current. God is sound, God is Shabad, and God is also love. Therefore, nam, or Shabad, is love. As the soul contacts Shabad, love flows out from within. Guru Nanak said, The love and attachment by which one merges into the truth is not possible without Nam. Guru Arjan Dev said, Love is Nam, with which the attachment to physical attractions is destroyed. Guru Amardas said, Devotees of the Shabd practice receive honor in the court of the Lord. Love for God is awakened in them, and one is attracted towards God. A Gurumukh, or faithful disciple, achieves love by means of contemplation on God. By this adornment of Shabad, his ego is dissolved another passage from the Sikh scriptures known as the Adi Granth. Those are some readings from Philosophy of the Masters. You're hearing Spiritual Awakening Radio, a Sant Mat Satsang podcast edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio. Today about rising above the darkness into the light. I want to share with you a reading from Maharishi Mehi Paramahans from his 
manual of Sant Mat mysticism known as Philosophy of Liberation or Moksha Darshan. Through the practice of meditation, one can progressively move the consciousness inward within oneself. In the beginning, the practice of, sub- of subtle meditation is difficult to accomplish owing to its unfamiliarity. Through the initial practice of manas jap or repetition of mantra or simran, the mind begins to focus. Then one progresses to the more subtle practice of manas dhyan, visualizing the form of the deity or satguru, and prepares for the subtle meditation. Consequently, through dristi sadhana, one practices one-pointedness and reaches inner light meditation. Finally, through the practice of Surit Shabad Yoga, inner sound meditation, the transcending of all the realms is achieved. A good description of the meditation practice from the couplets of Swami Sant Seviji Maharaj on the stages of Sant Mat meditation practice or Surit Shabad Yoga, inner light and sound meditation. Begin meditation with internally chanting or repeating the Guru Mantra incantation, the charged words given by the Master, and then try to visualize the radiant form of the Sat Guru in the still darkness of the inner sky with eyes closed. Follow that with focusing your attention at the seat of the soul within, at the third eye or the inner eye by making the two streams of consciousness in your two eyes converge at a point. When the two currents of consciousness meet at a point, divine light appears within. Then practice Surat Shabad Yoga, the yoga of divine sound, i.e. try to shift your attention to listening to the divine sounds or melodies the Anhad Nad, the Anhad Shabad ringing inside. Listening to the divine sound destroys all the agitations and fecalness of the mind. Ascending beyond or transcending the sounds, try to identify and tune into the quintessential unstruck melody called Sarshabd or Anhat Nad which alone is capable of taking you and merging you into oneness with the Supreme Lord. This is the ultimate deliverance, emancipation, or liberation. This spiritual path and its destination is divine love. The remover of difficulties is the one spiritual teacher who has given you the secret knowledge spiritual guidance and experience. That's a passage from Baba Devi Sahib of Muradabad. And this is a very encouraging passage I found in a book a fairly recently published book, in fact, by Santji, also known as Sant Ajayb Singh, a book called The Pain of Separation, which is a commentary on the mystic poetry of Baba Farid, the Sufi, along with his uh, commentary, the commentary of Santji. Baba Farid, the first watch of the night brings flowers, and the latter watches of the night bring fruit. Those who remain awake and aware receive the gifts from the Supreme Lord. Commentary by Santji. First, flowers come on plants or fruit trees, whether it is apple, orange, etc., and then comes fruit. Just like that, meditation done in the earlier part of the night is like flowers, and meditation done in the latter part is like fruit. And then he says something very, very encouraging. 
that is just so wonderful. Don't think that meditation done in the evening or at any other time is a waste. Even one second spent in the devotion of the Lord is counted. Baba Jaimal Singh used to say that when a soul, a jiva, withdrawing his attention from all outside things, listens to the Shabbat, his attendance is marked in Sachkhand. Masters whose inner eyes are opened tell us that when any jiva sits in meditation, even gods in the heavens look at him and say in surprise, Ah, in the Iron Age, a jiva is sitting in meditation and preparing to meet the Lord. The latter part of the night is important because getting up early at 3 a.m., we have just woken up and our surat, or attention, has just entered the body. We don't remember the thoughts of the previous day, and there is no noise in the streets. At that time, it becomes easier to withdraw the surat, the soul, from every single cell of the body, and so we get the fruit. Those who remain awake and aware receive the gifts from the Lord. Some commentary by Santji. In this book, uh, featuring mystic verses of Baba Farid the Sufi, along with the satsang discourses or commentary of Santji, Ajayb Singh, a book called The Pain of Separation, published by Sant Bani Ashram. Here, speaking of the practice of Amrit Vela, or Brahma Muhurta, getting up super early in the morning, in the middle of the night, 3 a.m. or so, a couple hours before sunrise, a few hours before sunrise, when we have the total sensory deprivation of the material plane. It's dark, it's quiet, and it's a time when, if we just wake up, we are not engrossed in the busyness of the day. Quietude is in the air. Most everyone else is still asleep, so there's very little negative thinking going on, spewing into the ethers, negative thoughts. It's a very tranquil, peaceful, silent, quiet time of the morning. Uh, Peaceful, quiet, and subtle in many different ways, you know. With so few people awake, it becomes easy at that time to meditate. It's dark, it's quiet, it's silent, it's easier to go into the meditative state. But it is so encouraging here that uh, Santji also says that any time spent in meditation is good, of value, of merit, of meaning. You know, if one is meditating at any time of the day or night, and not necessarily at this Brahma Muhurta or early in the morning. That is the best, the ideal time of the day. But Even one second spent in devotion of the Lord is counted. Don't think that meditation done in the evening or at any other time is a waste. Baba Jaimal Singh Ji used to say that when a jiva soul, withdrawing his attention from all outside things, listens to the Shabad, the sound, his attendance is marked in Sachkhand. And then it goes on to talk about how that the gods in the heavens go, go, wow, there's a human being who's meditating, you know, as if that's a very unusual thing uh, of great merit. Ah, in the Iron Age, a jiva soul is sitting in meditation and is preparing to meet with the Lord. How about that? You know, like that's a rare occurrence. And uh, you know what? It is a pretty rare occurrence for people to be pursuing the spiritual path, to be ascending in spirit, crossing the darkness into the light and into the sound. That's a rare thing, and it's good to be one of those souls doing that. The light is sustenance for the soul. The sound is sustenance for the soul. It's good to no longer be starving fasting from divinity, but partaking of the divine nature through meditation 
at the third eye center, Surat Shabad Yoga, the meditation of the inner light and sound, or a more precise definition of Surat Shabad Yoga would be the attention faculty of the soul being utterly and totally focused upon the positive power of the inner light and sound, becoming yoked to it, becoming absorbed into it in order to merge back into the Supreme Being once again. By doing Simran, when there is this love between the soul and God Almighty, each cell of our body, each drop of our blood and flesh, all of them get completely soaked in this love, and that is how the love emanates from each and every cell of the body, a passage from Baba Ram Singh. Concluding today's edition of the Sant Mat Satsang podcast, I want to reread a verse of the Anurag Sagar, a kind of gospel of Kabir, a kind of Gnostic gospel of India, the Anurag Sagar, the ocean of love. And once again, if you'd like to get a copy of that book of, of George Ornsby Jones on ascending through the inner regions, a book, a booklet online called The Inner Journey of the Soul Back to Its Origin. Send me an email at this address, james at spiritualawakeningradio.com. I'll send you a direct link to it. You can read it online, you can download it in uh, Kindle or PDF or various other formats for studying that wonderful book describing the path of the Masters. Wrapping up today's edition of the Sant Mat Satsang podcast, a passage from the Anurag Sagar. Just as the lotus blooms after getting the light of the sun, in the same way the sufferings of the souls from ages and ages are finished after having darshan or vision of Sat Parush, the true eternal being.